Here's what you can look forward to on this episode of the Nice Guys on Business. I mean, actually, all communication is manipulation. Because, for instance, going back to that seven-year-old who won't tidy their room, if you have a better way of persuading the seven-year-old to tidy their room, you'll use it because you believe it's in the good. So one of the things they teach you on day one of NLP training is always use your powers for good. The greatest trick the devil ever pulled was convincing the world that the nice guys didn't exist. Need an education on how to grow your business? The nice guys are here to help. Learn about great customer service, networking, and how just being nice can help you prosper. Now, here are your hosts, Doug Sandler and Strickland Bonner. Hey, Funkin' fans and Nice Guy community. Welcome back, welcome back, welcome back, welcome back. It is Monday, 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 so you get the quad. Welcome back, because I know you might be sleepy, trying to wake up. My name is Strickland Bonner on the other side of the microphone, Mr. Doug Sandler. So much fun this entire week is coming. You, you know, uh, we have a special uh, a special guest. Can we drop the name of the special guest that's going to be on not only Tuesday, but Thursday's episode as well? How do you know he's coming on Tuesday and Thursday? Because we, we set this up with him this way. I mean, I don't oh, know what okay. we're going to talk about. Maybe some really good stuff and some other things, but... I think that I think we should really uh, we should pay homage to the Funkin Fan community by by representing the community by having the original Funkin Fan on on the show uh, this week. So uh, well, Paul what? is kind of the original because he's been listening since the beginning. But Sean Carpenter, who is our guest on Tuesday and Thursday, our special guest, is really our our first most vocal fan. Yeah, our most vocal. He's actually the the one that reached out the first. And uh, and said, "Hey, you're coming in town. Why don't you hang out with us and uh, and uh, let's go get a cup of coffee?" <laughs> and I got a little worried, but I, I did meet with Sean, and he turned out to be not only a, a, a nice guy, but he ended up being again. I, I think he helped us to coin the uh, the Funkin' phraseology, a, a, in addition to all of the other Funkin' fans and nice guy community members that are out there. Without guys like Sean and Paul and Mar and the rest of the gang, uh, we we really just don't have a community. So thank you everybody for being a part of the community. Mm-hmm. Anyway, we do have an interview today with Mr. Tony Wrighton. Tony is all about Zestology. He has actually has a Zestology challenge. Zestology is really all about energy, vitality, and motivation. And we're all about what, motivation. What I like best about Tony is he's actually a, a very familiar face on, uh, on British TV, known to millions as the sports presenter on Sky Sports. Now, do you know, have you ever heard of Sky Sports? I mean, it's so amazing. If you go to England and you say... Have you ever heard of ESPN? Would everybody say yes? Or uh, we just assume because we're stupid Americans that everybody knows what everything that we do is. I would think. I don't know. I so so, so Tony is actually on this show, Sky Sports with with Anna Woolhouse. She's really cute too. Yeah, he's like he's like the shit over there. I mean, yeah? he's like the yeah yeah. So why I did mean, he talk to you? I don't know. <laughs> I really don't. Know. He was just a nice guy. I think that I think he he hired an agent and the agent got in touch. It's really funny, Strick. I've got I've been getting a lot of calls from publicists recently. They're saying yeah? we want our people to come on your show, and I keep thinking. Have you actually ever listened to right, our I know. show? <laughs> Are you sure you want to come on our show? Are you I, I almost I catch myself because sometimes I really want to say are you sure? <laughs> uh, you know, it's like I feel like we're getting away with something <laughs> by doing what we do, but I think we're just legit. It's funny. It's funny I how it works. That. Well, his podcast is called Zestology, and he interviews a wide range of experts in the field of health and personal development, and and he's really casual and really fun, and it's a good podcast. Yeah, yeah. We talk about NLP, Neuro Linguistics Programming, and if you don't know what that is, this is the episode for you. Uh, very, very fun episode. Tony does a great job of... Um, of he just, he knows he's a great storyteller, and part of what he talks about uh, in this is exactly how you can accentuate and make your stories come to life with, believe it or not, with just the words that you use. So, uh, great episode. Uh, before we get to the interview with Tony, just really quickly, I want to mention if you haven't uh, yet done the text to join, uh, go to your texting app. Type in 31996, and when you enter that number, uh, just enter in nice guys in the little area for your for the text, and we will enter you in a drawing to win a, a nice guys Funkin' Fan t-shirt. Uh, again, you're going to text the word nice guys, N-I-C-E-G-U-Y-S, no spaces, doesn't matter if it's upper or lowercase, nice guys, to 31996. 
Um, also, really quick, just want to mention if uh, if we would really appreciate it if you also recommend the episodes, all you need to do is hit the little star. Uh, if you're listening to us on Overcast, which we know that almost 90% of you now are listening on Overcast, uh, we get many, many downloads through Overcast. All we want you to do is just hit the little recommend button, and that will uh, tell us that you love us. We already know you love us, but let's prove it to the world. Um, remember, if I get... <laughs> I, I, I hope I don't have to eat these words one day, but I have a feeling I'm going to. Mm-hmm. If you recommend us to the point that we surpass uh, Tim Ferriss, um, as I promised, I will hunt down Tim Ferriss with a microphone, not with a rifle, but with, <laughs> with, with, with a microphone wherever he is in this country. And I will put the microphone in his face and uh, and get an interview with, with Tim, even if it's a very short interview, which it may be. Um, I want to uh, I want to surpass him. We want to surpass him, and and you're helping us do that. So do that we is surpass our house. him just in the business category? Yeah, well, that's the category that if we can surpass him in the business category, Strick, you may not realize this, but I I do <laughs> I, I I do watch the um, the statistics and the analytics on a on like on an hourly basis. It's it's ad nauseum. <laughs> I know I'm, I'm kind of irritating to myself as much as I look. If we in, if we surpass him in the business category, we are also going to surpass him in the overall category because he's number one on the entire network right now. We're number six, and he's number one in the business category, and we are number two. Okay, if we so surpass, we don't have. To, oh, okay. Well, yeah. If okay, we surp- I, I think what's going to happen is if we, it's in the business category, I want to surpass him. If we surpass him in the business category, chances are really good we're going to be surpassing him in the most recommended category too. But I just want to surpass him in the business category, which is really the only one that I'm focused on right now. Yeah. Okay. okay. All right. Enough. So uh, let's get to the interview with uh, with Tony. Any any final words before we head there? No, I think you said it all really nicely. All right. Let's do it. We are proud to be affiliated with the C Suite Radio Network and the Greatness Podcast Network. Our interview right here, Tony Wrighton on the Nice Guys on Business Podcast. Let's do it. At the end of your day, or maybe even the beginning of your day, you're physically spent, emotionally drained, and uh, just plain old worn out. Check out today's Nice Guy episode. Well, welcome, Tony, to the Nice Guys on Business podcast. Hi, Doug. Thanks for having me on. People are thinking, brain hacking. What on earth is going to happen over the next 15 minutes or so? <laughs> well, and, and that's okay, because you know, normally if we're talking about brain hacking, they know how much uh, we are into movies, so they're thinking horror movie and axes. So I know we're not doing yeah. any, no major surgery today, right? I promise. I promise. <laughs> none of that. So Tony, help help uh, the Nice Guy community, help me actually understand NLP 101. So share with the Nice Guy community what NLP is. Let's start there. Okay. Yeah. Well, actually, a lot of people who work in business communication sales might have already heard of it. And a lot of people who've been through any kind of therapy might have already experienced it. But NLP stands for Neuro Linguistic Programming, which is a set of skills and theories developed in the 70s, um, used by millions worldwide. But yeah, it's a very bad name. So <laughs> I always think that, you know, if I was to invent this now, I think neuro hacking would be a better way of describing it. Really, it studies how people do things well, how to improve your communication with other people and yourself, and just to kind of how to manage your moods and run your life a bit more effectively. So, Tony, I could almost, I, I definitely not almost, I could listen to you the entire day, and I'm sure most of in the audience can. Now, uh, you're not from Iowa, are you? I'm not. No, I'm. I'm currently in in what might not surprise your listeners. It's a very rainy, damp London. Okay. So, and, and, and you've written a whole bunch of books on this subject too. So you're you're like the you're definitely the NLP expert. So there's a whole bunch of techniques that are involved. And yeah. I guess the question would be more so: Why is NLP such a hot topic? Because it's it's not just been hot for like you said. It's come. It, it's been around since the '70s. It's been hot since the '70s, but it's really making a a strong uh, approach or strong, uh, you know, coming across the market very, very prolifically. What, why would you? Why would you say that's the case? Yeah. Well, I think I think that technology, and I'll be interested to know if you agree with me on this one, Doug. Technology has enabled self help to kind of almost be acceptable again because 10 years ago when people didn't have kindles they'd feel a bit sheepish about getting a self-help book out on the train for example but now you know you get your podcast on you listen to the you know your podcast or mine or whatever it might be or read a book on nlp and there's no stigma attached to it so i think that's why things like nlp are becoming increasingly popular um i've been into this stuff for a while and actually you know it's interesting because in a sense it's my it's my hobby 
my day job is that I'm a TV presenter here in the UK and I present on a sports channel called Sky Sports. And before that, I was a radio presenter. And um, I got when I started learning the skills of NLP, I realized that I could use them on my radio show to get more listeners, which was quite exciting. So that's what I did. But you're not even reaching out. I, I mean, you're reaching out, but there you can't determine what the what they're saying back to you so you have somebody that's either yelling at a speaker or yelling at back at you again through the uh through the airwaves but you're only one way so how does nlp work if you're let's say uh you know either a leader or a broadcaster or maybe somewhere where you're not necessarily uh having two-way communication with somebody through an email or through broadcast or through a podcast for example Mm. Well, neuro-linguistic programming, the Q is in the L bit of the NLP, the linguistics. There's loads of linguistics involved in it. So we really focus on how to tell stories, how to make our language rich and sensory and perceptive, and also how to be more persuasive. And, you know, going back to me on my radio show, one of the things that I wanted to do was get people to listen for longer, get more people listening, and get them feeling better about listening. So I started to use these techniques over a couple of months. And then after a couple of months, the boss cut and I I didn't really know what I was doing either because I'd only just started studying this stuff. And after a couple of months, the boss called me into his office and it was on a day when I'd really I'd smeared the techniques on pretty thick. I was like, oh, I'm going to be in trouble here. And he leant back in his chair and he put his arms behind his head and he gave it the real alpha male body language. I thought I'm I'm in so much trouble here. And he said, Tony, I don't know what you've done, but your listening figures have gone through the roof. Hmm. And it turned out that I was on the drive time show and I'd, I had more listeners than the breakfast show, which never really happens on commercial radio stations anywhere, probably in, the, in America as well. And it stayed like that for three years. So the breakfast show guy wasn't very happy, but I was delighted because the, the um, linguistic <laughs> skills that I was using were, were helping me. All right. So I bet you probably wanted to keep it as a secret. So the breakfast guy couldn't, uh, couldn't necessarily get, <laughs> get a hold of the drive time, uh, drive time audience. Yeah. So, okay. Well, he still got paid double to me. That was the problem. That was the annoying thing. <laughs> oh, so it came back to the boss. Hey, you yeah. know, you're paying him more than me. So, Share, all right, you, you've, 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 uh, you've tantalized the, uh, you've wet my appetite a lot. So share, like, give me some examples. Like, what do you do? Like, how, what are the words that you say? We always think if you offer money somebody, you know, to somebody over the air, that's some, something that would, that would, or create something that would be a good call to action that they, that would be so, uh, like tantalizing for them. But what would it be in your particular case? Mm. One of the things is just becoming better at telling stories and creating more of a picture, setting more of a scene when you tell a story. So, for instance, um, I, I was two weeks ago, I was in Morocco and I was climbing a mountain. It was a fantastic experience. We were uh, climbing at altitude and I could just tell you, yeah, it was a great experience. Or I could use the different senses to kind of paint a bit more of a picture because, you know, we set off before it, the, the sun had even come up. Mm-hmm. I mean, and I was kind of squinting to see very much. And I had this head torch on and I could hear the ice crunching under my feet because I was wearing crampons. And I felt so cold, even though I think it was kind of partly cold and partly nerves. And what I'm doing there is I'm using visual auditory and kinesthetic language to kind of paint the picture for you to really feel what it was like for me to walk up that mountain at that point, rather than just say it was a fantastic experience. And when you uh, when you use some of this language a bit more effectively, you, you help your listener to start to connect with what you're saying. Now, there's loads of persuasive stuff that I was using as well. I was, um, yeah, do you want to hear a couple of the, yeah, the fun yeah, things yeah, that I was using? I love yeah, it, love it, yeah. Um, I was using either or questions. So, you know, let's say you've got a naughty child who doesn't want to tidy their room. You could say, will you go and tidy your room? And the child will either say yes or no. But if you say to the child, do you want to tidy your room before or after dinner? The answer, both answers are fine as far as you're concerned. Yeah, it's kind of like asking somebody, do you still beat your wife? You still beat your wife. It's like, hey, listen, you know, that yeah. mean, that's assuming that they're going to be that they're either beat that they're beating your wife. In your particular case, uh, yeah. you're assuming that the person is going to be the little kid is going to be cleaning their room. It's a it's a great way to share uh, to, 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 to already include them in the action. So it's almost like they're there and they're they're going to do it. It's now just a matter of when. Yeah. Another one is is softeners. So when you want someone to do something, if you use what's called a softener ahead of the order, um, it makes them more likely to want to do it. If I say, Doug, make me a cup of tea. You might say, make it yourself. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. (laughs) But if I say, Doug, I wonder if you might consider making me a cup of tea. 
the, the same order is still in there, but I've used about three softeners. I wonder, maybe, might consider ahead, which has really turned a command into a kind of very gentle question, which is still a command. So these softeners can work very well when you're actually asking someone quite directly to do something. So even even at a greater scale, at a greater schedule and more severe, uh, I, I hear that NLP had saved your life. Is that true? Well, to a certain extent. Are you referring to when I got ill in the jungle? Yeah, yeah. I, I was I was reading some of the story, and it's like a fascinating yeah. story. Sorry, I didn't mean to hit you on that. I, oh no, yeah. it was it, it, listen. It was dark times. I mean, it's funny because I guess. What I've learned is that even though it was a dark time, I'm now happy that it happened because, well, it led me to doing my podcast, Zestology, you know, which which I, I probably wouldn't have even been presenting had it not been for the fact that I went to the Philippines a few years ago. It was it was a beautiful place. We were in the middle of nowhere. We were at this retreat called The Farm, and you had nothing more to worry about in the morning than the sounds of the birds chirruping in the trees outside your room and um, whether to just sunbathe or do a bit of yoga and Pilates and eat delicious food. And I've been using a little bit more of that sensory language, by the way, that I was talking about earlier on. I, um, I, s- I sense that a little bit. <laughs> yeah, yeah, good, good. But unfortunately, I got ill and um, I contracted a tropical virus that meant I had to fly home in the middle of the holidays, had to kind of get rushed home, spent three months in bed. I had a rash all over my body. I couldn't walk down the street. I had numb patches on my face. I had neurologists testing me for strokes and all the rest of it. It's a very scary time. And so the NLP skills and other stuff, I have to say, it wasn't just NLP helped because, you know, physically I was just laid so low. But um, using the NLP stuff and and a bunch of other kind of energy techniques that I've been talking about on Zestology, Mm -hmm. I started to kind of fight my way back to health. So, yeah, dark time, uh, but NLP definitely helped. And I'm now weirdly glad that I went through it. And, you know, it's it's interesting because I suppose people people often say, oh, you know, it's not it's not the the wins that are the most important thing is when you lose, it's when you fail, it's when things go wrong that actually there's the most to learn. Well, in NLP, it, it seems like from from not only just your explanation, but what I what I have learned about it through doing some research is that NLP, it's not just about hacking your brain. I mean, it's really about being more persuasive. I mean, there's there's definitely ways that you can manipulate the words that you say, the actions that you go through and the things that you're doing in order to uh, make yourself more effective as a as a leader i i I would think that nlp is really an effective tool as someone that is uh that that leads other people i reckon so but i think that people always they always slightly shudder when they hear that word that you just use manipulate (laughs) yeah 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 yeah. um i mean actually all communication is manipulation because for instance going back to that seven-year-old who won't tidy their room if you have a better way of persuading the seven-year-old to tidy their room, you'll use it because you believe it's in the good. So one of the things they teach you on day one of NLP training is always use your powers for good. Right, right. Well, <laughs> and you, you, you uh, can you share a little bit about you? You talk about this thing called the magic touch. Now, is that a program that you created, or a or a concept that you created, or is that something that's out there that you know about? Well, the magic touch is was in chapter one of my book on persuasion. And it's not really NLP, actually, but it was me adapting some very fun. When I started writing a book on persuasion, I'd already done all the NLP training and trained to as high a level as you can in NLP. But I started delving into some other persuasion research that's, that has been done around the world. And there's some great fun stuff out there. And there's one guy in particular who's a bit of a legend in persuasion circles. He's called Nicholas Guiguen, and he's done all kinds of uh, persuasion studies. And one of them he did was in a cafe in southern France. And he found that when customers came in, if a waitress did one specific piece of body language when they walked in, not when they brought the bill, Mm -hmm. their tips would increase by over 120%. What? And that bit of body language was touching them in one part of the body. Now, before you go any further <laughs> and before your mind runs riot, this was a, a specific it was deemed to be a kind of a non-invasive place to touch them. It was deemed to be kind of polite, but not too intimate. Where do you think that spot was on the body where the waitress touched the customer? I'm going to go with either shoulder or hand. Yeah, it was, you're very close. It was kind of forearm. Yeah, it seems really interesting. Whenever, whenever I walk into a room, if somebody, the, the, the person that actually comes up to me 
you know, not invading my personal space, but the one that puts their their hand on my shoulder, or even just just if it's just a "Hey, how are you?" just kind of like a pat, mm-hmm. not on my head, but like you know, not a good boy kind of pat, but just a "Hey, it's so good to see you," and just kind of hits my shoulder, just taps it. It seems like that's the person in the room that I find the most attractive to conversation, and yeah, it, you know, for me, it's it really is. I I don't mind when somebody gets it. Now that I hear that there are people that don't like that that personal space invaded, but I, I don't really see that as a personal space invasion, just that little tap. Do you? I don't, but you know, I mean, us Brits, we're not exactly, we're quite reserved. <laughs> <laughs> so, so some, some people maybe don't. And I think you need to judge each case on its merits maybe. But um, I mean, the other one is, you know, is, and, and if you don't want to, you don't want to use the magic touch just by using someone's name, Doug. Yeah. It's so yeah. powerful, isn't it? And it, and I know it's like, it's almost kind of a cliche because people always say, oh, you know, that that's something. And it, what was it? Um, How to Make Friends and Influence People was the first book that started talking about that. But it's so true. And I always forget. <laughs> well, when I go to when when I go to the uh, the grocery store, even the you know the the check the checkout people, the ones at the cashiers, they're always wearing yeah. their name tags, and I always think they're wearing their name tags because they uh, they obviously they want to have some some affiliation with the brand of the store. But I do it. I use their name all the time whenever they. I just it's a part of my practice when they're handing me change or when they're ringing up my register. How are you? How are you doing today? They say to me, and I always say, I'm doing great, Sally, or I'm doing great, John. Thanks. It's just one one of those That's things nice. where you just i just feel like they're spending their entire day standing at that cash register and just to have a little interaction with them i just want to make them feel more comfortable i'm going to be in there over and over and over again and again i'm not sure that that's a part of uh of nlp as much as it is a part of just being what i would deem as a nice person yeah well, I mean, you know, talk about persuasion skills. I don't know if you've heard of Robert Cialdini, no, but he no. is probably the world's biggest expert in NLP. And I feel like, you know, having listened to some of your podcasts and got into your podcast, I feel like that the kind of people that listen to your podcast would love his book. It's called um, Persuasion, The Psychology of Persuasion. And it's so good. And there are six main principles, according to him, on why people are persuaded to do things for other people. And one of them is simply liking. So if you like the other person, you're more likely to do something for the other person. Right, right. And, and so I think, you know, what you were talking about there is r- very valid indeed. You know, the best salespeople I've ever met. They don't, I don't think they even know what they're doing. They just get on well with people. They just, <laughs> right, they want, right. they genuinely want to know how little Johnny did in the school race last weekend and, you know, what they were up to at the weekend and that kind of thing. So, um, so yeah, liking is a very important part of it. I always find that that is, uh, that is a true quality or a trait that is a quality that, um, that, that will transfer nicely no matter what your business is. You don't even necessarily need to know your, if you know your people better than you know your products, I think that that is a key to, uh, to success in any business. Not that you don't want to know the products that you're serving, that you're selling, but the idea of knowing the, building the relationships and knowing the people for me, that, that's mm. what it's all about. So, yeah. t- Tony, help me connect the dots for a second here. Uh, create an action item or give me an action item because the nice guy community does like to put into practice the the things that we're talking about on the show. So what what can they do tomorrow or even today that will help them uh actually uh, you know go a little bit further in their businesses or in their life just using some little technique or some little hack that NLP would uh, would provide for them. Okay, I've got a good one for you and it's okay. a kind of persuasion technique and it is Think about the next time that you're sending an email to more than one person, okay? So you're using that CC button. Mm -hmm. Think about individualizing your emails because the more that you make individual requests to people, the more likely they are to feel obliged to take you seriously. And I'll give you an example. Um, I was uh, was in Morocco a couple of weeks ago and I was climbing this mountain for charity and I emailed 100, 100 of my friends on CC. I'm doing this effort for charity. It's really important to me. I'm raising money for charity. Um, would you like to sponsor me? Mm-hmm. And because I sent it to 100 people at once, not that many people took it very seriously. So I remembered my persuasion skills and I came back at it at a different approach and I sent 100 separate emails, which obviously took far longer to do. Right, right. And I actually personalized one line on, the, on each email. So, you know, hi, Doug, how are you doing? How's the podcast going? And then after that, 
pasted the bit in about mm-hmm. doing the uh, about doing the, the work for charity right because there was an individual request and because i hadn't hidden behind the cloak of cc after that almost all the people got back to me and a lot of people sponsored me so think about using cc less and think about individualizing your communication more I love that, and I also love the idea of uh, everybody don't hit reply all either. Reply all is the worst freaking button ever. <laughs> I don't know if you get those on your emails. Reply all. Do you like that? I hate that. <laughs> oh, get rid of reply all. <laughs> you see, you're, okay, you agree. So yeah. uh, also just get like you know, I mean, emails in general is just too many of them, aren't there? But yeah, um, yeah, way too many, yeah. way too many. So I love your podcast. Uh, as Tony had uh, made reference to a little bit earlier, it's called Zestology, and yeah. uh, it looks like on the I, I was. Listening to the latest episode that you have, you get into this hyperbaric oxygen tank. Now, so yeah. tell me about that, because that's, again, not necessarily connected directly to NLP, but just the maximum performance uh, thing. So how t- talk about a hyperbaric oxygen chamber. Scary? Amazing? What? Yeah. Well, so as, as, and as, as I said, NLP is really a study of how people do things well. And Zestology, it's almost like my hobby. You know, my, my day job is working on Sky Sports and I love that and everything else. But uh, Zestology is a bit more about my journey towards more energy and vitality and plenty of fun along the way as well. So I met this guy in London who runs this hyperbaric oxygen tank. And essentially, you get into this weird tank for about an hour and you breathe in pure oxygen. And I've got to tell you, Doug, the <laughs> only way I can can explain it is after you've done this for an hour you get out and you feel like you've had a quadruple espresso it is dynamite it's actually fantastic That's and crazy. it's not just for kind of people who want to get an extra two or three percent because i'm great now i've recovered and i'm back and i'm you know feeling good but it turns out that for people with serious degenerative illnesses a lot of people with cancer use hyperbaric oxygen um people with parkinson's and multiple sclerosis and children with autism obviously there's no miracle cures but there are lots of these kind of functional medicine alternative therapies out there that are very interesting to try infrared saunas is another one the ketogenic diet so i give it all a go and find some stuff that works and some doesn't but the hyperbaric oxygen podcast that you mentioned has just come out today actually and uh, you probably heard the bit at the front when i actually yeah. recorded a bit of myself in there yeah. i think it sounded like i was on the moon or something but you know it's fun to try and record anyway it was uh it was good i always wonder because i'm very claustrophobic was it was it a very uh, is it a tight chamber or is it more of a room it took i think it would take you a few minutes it is it's a it's a relatively tight chamber i mean there's plenty of space and you can actually take a book or you can even take your phone in there with you yeah um you can watch videos in there or whatever you like it does take a little while to get used to but you've got a doctor out there just outside you can you know knock on the on the window if you're feeling uncomfortable or you can buzz through and talk to them so yeah it'll take you three or four minutes to feel comfortable but i think after that you'd find it pretty similar to being on a plane or something like that your ears do the same thing as when you're on a plane you know when you have to clear yeah yeah like that you have to clear is it's kind of like that so talk about your uh on a little personal note you so you're you're on the number one morning drive time show in the uk and you're on tv also uh, share share a little bit of of that how that feels the popularity side of things uh you know unfortunately we don't get uk uh, much of uh yeah. much of the the brit tv over here so share share how that feels well, Doug, it's very kind of you to big me up so much. Um, yeah, I'm on. I'm on the, the number one uh, sports TV channel in the UK, Sky Sports, and, and before that, I was I was on the Drive Time Show. Um, it's great fun. I mean, you know, for me, I love sport. I get to talk about sport, and I think, you know, I mean. It's not like being famous. I'm, going to say, I'm not at that level. And also my hair is a bit spikier when I'm not on air. So, you know, I don't think people recognize me too much, which is great. But it's nice to do two different things. And then every once in a while, you kind of get top sporting people who want to be on the podcast, which is good as well. But um, for me, I always think that I've never done any job for money. I've always done things because I was just keen on doing it. You know, I left university and I was like, hmm, being a DJ being on the radio that sounds like quite a lot of fun yeah so i kind of did it you know and then i I was just very lucky because the things that i picked paid a you know fairly decent wage at the same time but really allowed me to do what i loved so i'd say that's the case with the tv 
and um, and everything else. You know, this, the books and everything. I, I do like it and I do like chatting to people. And this sounds like my idea of fun, being on your podcast and chatting to you, Doug, really. Uh, totally. Thanks, Tony. Thanks so much. And you, and you, you, are, uh, you are definitely a, a testament to the nice guys that are out there. There are even nice guys in the UK. See, nice guy community, they're, they're everywhere you go, not just here in the United States. Well, yeah, Doug. I mean, the only <laughs> thing is that sometimes I think that nice guys don't win. Do you know what I mean? You know, there was a like, uh, there's a quote I put in my book on the I, I wrote a book called Nice Guys Finish First, and there's a yeah. there's a quote by Gary Shandling in chapter one, and it says, "If you don't think nice guys finish first, you don't know where the finish line is." And I <laughs> I truly believe that it is all about understanding where where you stand and what you need to do in order to be nice, and and really where is the finish line? Is success money? Is success happiness? Is success empathy, gratitude? What is it? And so for me, it never has had a dollar sign attached to it. If I enjoy what I do, I always find that the dollars come. Uh, it's just a matter of time. It may take me longer to get there, but I but I enjoy doing it in the process. Mm. Well, yeah, and I've been loving your podcast as well, and it's great because, yeah, sometimes I probably am a nice guy, and sometimes I wonder if I'm too much of a nice guy, but you've given me faith that it's all, all in the right direction. <laughs> okay. All right. I like it. All right. So let me ask you a couple of personal questions and then we will, uh, we will wrap oh, up okay. if you have, if you yeah. have time for that. Um, okay. So you get an invitation in the mail, Tony, to a party. Okay. And you know, sometimes yeah. on the, on the invitation, it says, uh, what the dress code is for the party. You know, it says like formal yeah. attire requested or, yeah. or casual or, or tr- casual chic. What kind of attire would you prefer to wear to an, to an event? I went to a wedding recently in Ibiza. Do you guys, you guys have heard of Ibiza, haven't you? No, what's Ibiza? Uh, uh, maybe Ibiza. You might call oh, it Ibiza. Yeah, yeah, like yeah, Spanish yeah, island. Yeah, yeah uh-huh. we call it Ibiza. Yeah. And the dress code was Ibiza chic. And I was what like, what the hell does oh, that mean? <laughs> the hell is that? I did not have a clue. In the end, I think I styled it out pretty well. Basically wore smart shirt, casual trousers and flip flops. And to me, that's the ideal. That's just the ideal. You know, flip flops anyway makes me feel pretty good. So, yeah. <laughs> OK. All right. I got it. That sounds good. And uh, do you have your phone anywhere near you, Tony? Yeah, I've got it. Uh, I've got it right next to me. Great. Do you have an iPhone or something inferior? <laughs> <laughs> You'll be pleased to hear I've got an iPhone. Excellent. All right. Go to your texting app if you have a quick second to do that. Okay, yeah, yeah, right. I'm going to that now. It's Tell- in airport mode, by the way, just to, to cut any distractions. That's all right. I appreciate yeah. that. Uh, go to your texting app and let us know what is the last text message you either sent or received. <laughs> <laughs> this is good. I, I had a message from Catherine a couple of minutes ago, Yeah. and she says, Oops, I stole a knife from the hotel by accident. <laughs> and she sent a picture of a knife from the Bulgari <laughs> Hotel in London. <laughs> oh, my. That's a good one. All right. Now, go to, your, go to your photo app and tell us the last photo that you took. <laughs> this is great. Well, thanks. You feel free to question. use these on your show. And, and, and you don't even have to give me credit for it. I'm sure I stole it from somebody else. <laughs> yeah, I'll give you credit. It's okay. The, the last photo on my app is... Um, is a picture of me at our Zestology live gig that we had on Saturday with a guy called Dean Karnazes, who you should have on your show, actually. He's so great. He's the yeah. um, world's most celebrated ultra marathon runner. Oh, and he was I running a marathon that. in London. He's, he's run for three days without sleep. He ran to the South Pole. He's run in all 50 states in 50 days. He's an awesome guy. Nice. So, yeah. yeah, we had him in London on Saturday. Anybody that's ever been on your show, f- feel free. If you uh, think it would send be a good fit yeah. for the nice guys, so, yeah, send, send them oh, my way. Yeah, I love it. Of course, with pleasure. Uh, I'd, I love I'd, I'd love to. Yeah. So, so, Tony, if somebody wanted to get in touch with you to find out more about what you do and about your books, where's the best spot to reach out to you? Well, Doug, they could go to TonyWrighton.com, which is my website. Uh, W-R-I-G-H-T-O-N is my surname. Or you can just... Uh, search for Zestology, and that's the podcast, and you can find me that way and hear me in a hyperbaric oxygen chamber, sounding like I'm on the moon <laughs> and um, clearing my ears at the same time, but feeling like I've had a quadruple espresso afterwards. Awesome, awesome. Well, Tony, thank you so much. I, I appreciate you giving us the little extra time. I know I only promised you, uh, or I told you it would be about 15 ah, minutes, and here we are, 25 good, into yeah, it, and yeah. y- you are you are truly a, a good guy. So thanks for being a part of the Nice Guy community, Tony, and thanks for being a part of our uh, our program today. You too, Doug. Keep up the good work. Thanks. Nice guy community. Never underestimate the power of nice. Again, special thanks to Tony Wrighton for being a part of our show today. All of his information will be right there in the show notes. Just click the link. Don't forget to please, please, please recommend our podcast. If you're listening on over, over to, uh, Overcast or on iTunes or wherever you're listening, I forget, I forget where I am. We're in so many places, Tony. I don't know where the hell I am. <laughs> anyway, nice guy community again. Thanks again. Steve O'Brien, take us out of here. For the nice guys on business, I'm Steve O'Brien. 
They have listeners in other countries? I didn't think anyone was listening outside of their house. Except maybe their moms. <laughs>